then I'm one of the paediatric doctors over at Bristol Children's Hospital, but I'm also here with Bristol Renal doing a PhD looking at necrotic syndrome. Um, and I think it was great to hear from Carly and her dad, wherever, wherever they are, earlier on, because it really puts into context what we're doing um, in research and, and really gives more meaning to what we're doing. We can spend a lot of time looking at things in the lab, but when you put it into contact with, context with patients, um, it, it's much more meaningful. Um, and I'm going to talk about the UK uh, Necrotic Syndrome cohort, and just out of interest, how many people are taking part in the Nephros study or in radar? Can you put your hands up? Does anyone? Great. Well, it's, it's fantastic, and it'll be great if, if as many people as possible can be part of that, because uh, as Liz was saying, it's a great resource for our research. Um, as people have already said, Nephrotic Syndrome is a rare disease. Um, just because it's rare doesn't mean it's not important. It's a very important condition, but because it's rare, it's more difficult and more challenging to study because there aren't as many patients. Um, what we do know, and probably you talking to each other, I realise that just because you have a diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome doesn't mean you're like in any way the next person that has nephrotic syndrome. Um, it's, a, it's a syndrome, and it's caused by many different underlying problems. Um, and I'm sure you've probably had lots of different questions when you first had a diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome, particularly what might be the right sort of treatment, what is the chance of needing a transplant down the line, hopefully, hopefully not, and, and also will the disease come back after a transplant. Um, and so, as Liz showed this picture, although people have nephrotic syndrome, you can be all sorts of different types of, of this condition. And one of the ways to understand this in, in more detail is to collect lots of people together in a cohort, which is what we're doing within the UK. Currently, and I'm, I'm sure many of you may have experienced this, uh, you know, have a diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome, and most people will start off with the first treatment, so steroids. And if that doesn't work, you move on to something else, some immunosuppression, cyclosporin or tacrolimus, something like that. And if that doesn't work, you go on to something else. And if that doesn't work, you go on to something else, and then maybe have a transplant, and then maybe after a transplant it comes back. Um, and this can go on for many years, and it's often quite difficult for patients and for doctors to deal with. So ideally, we want something like this. So you have a, have a diagnosis, and then we can work out, well, these patients will respond to this treatment, so we give this treatment, first of all, and these patients respond to treatment B. Um, at the moment, it's a bit of a black box because we don't have a, a very good way of saying this is what's going to happen to you as an individual. So the way to try and work out what is this black box is to, to, to try and move towards something called personalised medicine or stratified medicine. And this is really trying to get as much information as you possibly can very early on to work out which group of patients you might be in. So some information is about you as a patient, so male or female, what age do you start with the disease, is there anyone in the family that's had the same disease, do you respond to steroids or not. The other area is genetics, so as Liz has been saying, collecting blood samples to look at your DNA and work out if there are any particular genes that are causing your nephrotic syndrome. Um, and also collecting samples, so blood samples and urine samples, because what we're working on here is trying to develop tests that we can do on these samples to see are there any predictors in the, in the blood or the urine which can help to put you into one of these different groups. And eventually we hope to move on to clinical trials, so we have all this information, we put you into different groups and then we test different medications to see which one would work for that particular group. So as Liz said, since 2010 we've been uh, recruiting patients to the, to the nephrotic syndrome cohort. And, and this just shows all the different centres that are now recruiting. It started off with just 12 children's renal units, um, but now is over 60 different units, adults and children, across England, Scotland and Wales. And this is just a, a, a little bit of information, just a snapshot of some of the, the data. Um, so almost 1,800 patients, and about 60% are male, so boys or men, um, and that fits with what we've seen previously, it is a condition that does tend to affect men a little bit more than, than women. Um, and this just shows the year of birth of patients that are now in the cohort. So until recently we were collecting only the, the children and young adults, but you can see that we now have some patients who are possibly in their 70s and 80s. Um, so we cover the whole 
age spectrum. This is just now focusing on children in more detail. Um, so this is from age from birth up to age 18. And this is the number of children with onset of disease in the different age groups. So what we can see, so in the first three months of life, we have 15 patients, or about 15 patients, that actually developed nephrotic syndrome as a, as a newborn baby. And in the, in the black here, what we've done is we've tested the genetics of all of these patients to decide and to work out, are they one of these patients with one of the 50 genes causing their disease, or are they not? So in the black here, we can see that in these very newborn children, the children that develop it within the first three months, and almost all of them have a genetic cause for the disease. As you get older, you're much less likely to have a genetic cause, but at every age group there were some, there were a few patients that did have a genetic cause for the disease. And this is important to help decide about future treatments and also to decide about transplant. And this, this has been published actually this year in uh, Kidney International. That's some of the things we've been doing with the data, and, the, and there's lots more in that paper if you're interested. What we're also doing is work in the lab, and hopefully you've been around upstairs and, and had a look at some of these uh, things. So you've seen this picture before. This is the, the podocyte, this cell with the finger or foot processes that, that, that lock together. And what we've been able to do in the lab here for almost the last 15 years is grow these cells from patients in dishes um, upstairs in the lab and do various different tests on them. So these are some colorful pictures which hopefully you saw upstairs. And what we can do is we can treat the cells with so blood from patients. We, we spin the blood down and that produces this yellow liquid called plasma. Um, or if you've had a transplant and having plasma exchange, we're using this fluid, putting it on the cells here and seeing what changes are happening after this treatment. And we do that, we take from the cells, we take out the proteins and we do some of the tests um, to see what proteins might be going up, what proteins are going down and how this could be help us to understand what is the cause um, and potential treatments for nephrotic syndrome. And there's lots of ongoing work, as I said, to try and work out are there things that we can test in patients' blood, either early on in disease or before they have a blood trans uh, before they have a kidney transplant to predict what might happen afterwards. So this is an area where you really can help by being part of RADAR and being part of the Nephros study and uh, agreeing and consenting to give samples of blood and plasma exchange. So the more patients we have and the more samples that we have available, the, the greater the chance of uh, finding new ways of testing and treat treating the condition. Um, and these are just many different examples of the ways we can look for these different factors. So the next steps here with us are to continue increasing the size of the cohort, getting more detailed information about you as patients and families, uh, and collecting these samples so that hopefully we will move closer to the clinical trials that will bring new treatments that I think we're all looking for. I'd just like to thank everyone here in the, in the lab, um, my funders such as the National Institute for Health Research, um, and then particularly all of you patients and families for your participation in the studies. Thank you. Thank you.